A lot of cars come through the Car Advice Garage and inevitably there can be some debates over who gets to drive what. Every now and again, something unexpected becomes hot property. The Honda Jazz is part of our long-term fleet and initially it wasn't the one that we all wanted to get behind the wheel of. But the more we drove it, the more we realised just how useful it can be. Not only is it a fun, zippy little thing, more importantly it's perfect for tackling a million different weekend jobs. Picking things up, moving stuff around, dropping things off or going shopping with a car full of people. The little Jazz is a bit of a wonder kid in this regard. Not that you know it by looking at it, it's a baby city car. This is the VTIS, which is the middle of the range. It starts with the base model VTI, and the top of the line is the VTIL. Now this scores LED headlights, which look great, but they don't turn off automatically, so don't forget and leave them on, or you'll run your battery flat. It's got fog lights, 16 inch alloy wheels with Bridgestone Taranza tires, which is almost sporty. Now this colour is called Attract Yellow. It's a $490 premium paint. I'm sure it will attract something, but probably not what I'm looking for. It's quite long for a city car, almost four metres. It's just over one and a half metres tall and it's almost 1.7 metres wide. In the boot, there's 354 litres of space. A space saver spare wheel somewhere under here. There are no shopping bag hooks though, or 12 volt outlets. But think about this, in the next size up segment wise, the Mazda 3 only has 308 litres of space. Even the Toyota Corolla is only slightly ahead at 360. The key to the Jazz's versatility, aside from its impressive amount of space inside, is Honda's magic seat system. Watch this. The rear seats are 60-40 split fold and they fold completely flat. Or you can flip the seat face up like this and you've got all of this room to play with. Now you can see why every time someone in the office had something to cart around on the weekend, they wanted the Jazz. Even utes and SUVs were overlooked in favour of this little guy because it's easy to get around the city and it's easy to park. Now it is a five-seater, but as you can see, there is not a whole lot of room in the middle, but there's loads of knee room, plenty of headroom, no air vents, which is a bit of a shame, but there's mat pockets, bottle holders in the doors, and visibility is really good. You don't feel closed in back here at all. It has a seven inch touchscreen, which is a really nice addition in a car this size. The fonts get a little bit pixelated though, and it can be slow to load, and there's plenty of menu within menu action going on, which can get a little bit confusing. There's no digital speedo, no push button start, and no inbuilt satellite navigation, though you can connect your phone via Bluetooth, and it does phone and audio streaming. There are two USB points, two 12 volts, a HDMI, and an auxiliary. The climate control system has no buttons either. It's all a touch setup too. It has a rear view camera and even in a car this size, that's a great thing to have. Visibility in the Jazz is awesome, but why make life harder than it has to be? The cabin is really well designed. It feels nice and spacious. There are two cup holders here, as well as an extra one for the driver. A little storage nook in front of the gear shift, water bottle holders in the doors, and a decent sized center console bin. Now the cloth seats, the material doesn't feel that bad. They're pretty flat and firm, but not uncomfortable. The sun visors are nice and wide, and the mirror is a really good size. The steering wheel has buttons for cruise control, phone, radio, and even paddle shifters for when you want to pop it into sport and go for a drive, which is what I'm going to do right now. The Honda Jazz VTIS has a 1.5 litre four cylinder petrol engine that produces 88 kilowatts and 145 newton meters. It has a continuously variable transmission and it's front wheel drive. Now, 88 kilowatts, that isn't a lot of power, and the CVT does seem to struggle a bit when you ask a lot of it, like if you're heading around an uphill corner. But under lighter throttle, it really seems to hit its stride and the transmission responds more promptly and appropriately. The Jazz does feel firm on the road, but that almost works in its favour, making it feel a little bit sporty. Body control and balance is good, and around the corners, it takes the turns with a little bit of attitude. You'll notice a little bit of body roll, but then this car is pretty tall for its size. The steering is direct and accurate, again adding to that surprise package factor. It can get a little noisy in here with that firm ride, 
Every time you go over a bump, you'll not only feel it jolt, but you'll hear it too. Engine noise and road noise almost seem to echo around in this space. I think with more people and more luggage in here, that would help disperse it. The 1.5 litre engine is quite big for a car of this size, so as you would expect, the claimed fuel economy is higher than many of its competitors at 5.8 litres per 100 kilometres. During our testing, we got 7.8. When it comes to ownership costs, Honda offer a three-year, 100,000 kilometre warranty with servicing due every six months or 10,000 Ks at an average cost of $278. With its clever use of space, it feels like a much bigger car inside and Honda's Magic Seat system offers configuration options that you don't even get in much larger cars. Even though it's not high powered, it still manages to add a bit of sportiness and fun to the driving experience. There's much more to the Honda Jazz than meets the eye.